Hey guys, you're listening to the English Made Simple Show. This is episode number 161, number 161, numero 161. Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to episode number 161. This is Milena speaking, your host of the English Made Simple podcast. Yes, it's true, it's me. I sound a bit different. It's really me, okay? I came down with a cold over the weekend and guess what? I lost my voice. Yesterday, I couldn't speak. Today, I feel a little bit better, so I decided to record today's episode. Um, I know I sound a bit scary. I hope you don't end up having nightmares after today's episode. <laughs> my voice is not as uh, as it is normally. Before I... um. Going to today's show, let me just quickly explain what it means to come down with something. So in my introduction, I said I came down with a cold. Basically, what this means is I got a cold. I hope it's a cold and not a flu. Flu is a bit more serious. And we're in the middle of summer here in Australia and I managed to get a cold. I know that's my luck. So ironic. In Spanish, uh, to have a cold, if I say I have a cold, it would be estoy resfriada. For my non-Spanish speakers, um, non-Spanish listeners, a cold is when you get sick. This usually happens in winter when it is really cold outside and you don't look after yourself, you end up sick. To best describe the symptoms of a cold is like this. You get a runny nose, like your nose gets runny. You get a sore throat, a painful throat. <clears throat> That's the throat. Then you get your eyes, watery eyes and headaches. You get headaches often. Uh, and you also get achy muscles. They become tender and sensitive, your muscles. The word ache, I describe muscles as achy. So the word ache is another word to mean painful. Sometimes you get painful muscles. I have been taking medicine to make myself feel better so I can try to get over this cold. But um, it didn't go away before today's episode, unfortunately. So yeah, the good news is that you won't listen to my husky voice for too long. <laughs> <clears throat> I got a cup of tea next to me, so I think we are good to go with today's show. So guys, today's episode is going to teach you some new vocabulary related to the recent interview that I had with Nati Eustachio. I wanted to prepare you for some words before I release the complete interview next week. And it's almost an hour long. I don't want you to get confused or lost. So I hope today's episode is going to prepare you, uh, prepare you well enough for the next episode. All right, so who is Nati Eustachio? Nati is originally from Brazil, but lives in the US, United States. She initially moved to Seattle, then relocated to Hawaii not long ago, so she has been living in the U.S. for four or five years now, I think. Nati worked as a psychologist back in Brazil, and then she worked as a therapist in Seattle, and now works as a transition coach helping immigrant women adapt to their new life overseas. I would like to give you a quick background of how Nati and I met. Surprise, surprise, we met online. <laughs> Nati is a listener of the English Made Simple show. She found my podcast in one of the Facebook groups that she's a member of. And uh, someone in that group shared my podcast. So thank you so much to that person who shared it. I really appreciate it. So that's pretty cool. And then Nati sent me an email introducing herself. She wanted to see how she could help the listeners of the EMS show. So naturally I was intrigued to hear Nati's story. I haven't had that many guests on the show in the past, uh, except my sister, who I had recently, uh, the Halloween special episode. <laughs> For the new listeners tuning in, uh, you can check out episode number 158, I think. I better check that. You can hear the interview with my evil twin sister. <laughs> Actually, the uh, episode number 152. I also had another guest on the show, Weon Inteligente. He made an appearance in episode 100. That was a funny episode. Check it out while you're browsing through the archives. 
So this was the first time I had a chat with someone who is not related to me. This episode is for you if you're already living in an English-speaking country like the US, New Zealand or Australia, Canada and so on. And it's for you if you're thinking of moving overseas. And, uh, or if you just want to, you know, spend a short time overseas to learn, uh, to learn the language or just to travel and, and learn about new cultures. So this episode is for you guys. As you can see, I had to bring Nati to the show and have her share her story of migrating to the US. And I hope this story gives you hope wherever you happen to be right now. And to sum it up, uh, this is what you will learn next week. You will learn about the au pair program. Nati will also share some English tips, uh, how she dealt with the pronunciation of certain words, how she learned English, and how she managed to speak with native speakers in English. We also touch on things like jobs in the US, how to apply for a job in the US, and we also mention something called limiting beliefs. And today I will explain what limiting beliefs are in this episode, okay? So stay tuned. I wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to the uh, new terms, which will also give you some context of what the interview um, is about. In today's episode, I will only mention the terms that you might not have heard of before. So I just wanted to explain them because you will hear them next week um, in the next week's episode. Okay, so the first word I would like to share with you is au pair. What is, a, uh, what is an au pair? What does it mean? I think this is a French word and it means like it's a live-in nanny. Nanny is a person who looks after kids like a babysitter. Right, so if you're thinking of migrating overseas, let's say you wanted to come to Australia. Some of the ways you could consider coming here would be to come on a working holiday visa, to come as an international student or to come here permanently um, as a skilled migrant. There are other visas out there, but uh, I'm not an immigration agent, so I think it's best to get an advice from an immigration agent on this. But uh, if you're under the age of 26, if you are between 18 and 26, you could come to Australia by working as an au pair. The au pair program allows you to learn a new language and discover new cultures uh, by living with the au pair family and caring for their kids. And then in exchange, you get some pocket money, you get some money, uh, and you get free accommodation and you get meals provided at home. If you would like to learn more about the au pair program, simply do a quick search online. There could be a local agency in your country that specializes in providing au pair services. Another term I wanted to share with you today is Toastmasters. This is what we cover in the interview with Nati. Toastmasters is an international organization. It was created to prepare you for public speaking. A lot of people can have fear of public speaking. So by attending Toastmasters, um, Toastmaster meetings, you will be able to overcome that fear. Attending those meetings is also good for English learners because you are, you're going to be put on the spot and you have to speak, speak in English. So you could either talk about yourself or what you do for work. And you would have to speak for just a certain period of time, short period of time. I haven't been to one of these uh, meetings yet, but I have seen them in my local library. They organize events um, in the libraries usually. In the interview with Nati, we also talk about LinkedIn, um, about CVs and applying for jobs in the US. And one of the important thing that Nati mentioned was the LinkedIn. LinkedIn platform is widely used here in Australia. And as it appears, it is used in the US as well. This is how the recruiters will find you so they can invite you for job interviews. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile yet, I think you should create one. You should definitely create one today. Right, the next term I wanted to cover with you today is limiting beliefs. What are limiting beliefs? By the way, guys, belief, the word belief that ends in letter F uh, doesn't change when used in the plural form. You simply add the S so it becomes beliefs. If you would like to learn more how to pronounce words that end in F, letter F, please check out episode number 85. 
So I suggest you go back and check out episode 85 and you'll learn about pronunciation of certain words that end in F. And the word belief is an exception to that rule, okay? Cool. Okay, so back to belief. Belief, what is it? Belief is a noun and it means to accept that something exists and that we think that that something is true. A belief could be a point of view or the way of thinking. You create your own belief through repeated thoughts and then you start believing those thoughts to be true. In Spanish, the word belief is creencia. Okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, once you are an adult, once you become an adult, you start believing that the life is all about responsibilities and that you're not allowed to have fun. <laughs> that's an example of a belief. That's what some people think. And Nati and I talked about limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are things that we say to ourselves that become ingrained in our mind and then we start believing whatever we are saying to be true. A limiting belief may prevent you from becoming uh, successful at work. It could stop you from achieving high results. Like for example, you constantly tell yourself that you are not good enough to do something or to be someone, to be famous, for example. Take me for example, when I started out podcasting, it took me a while to actually start because I was being held back by my limiting beliefs. I had voices in my head telling me, hey, who are you to do a podcast? You think you're Barbara Walters from ABC News or something like that? I kept thinking I wasn't good enough to have my own show. That's an example of a limiting belief and you know what guys, we always have them. We will always have them. They don't go away. They always appear. Um, they appear from time to time. Whenever we try to get out of our comfort zones, the limiting beliefs start to show. So how do we overcome limiting beliefs? Well, one way to overcome a limiting belief is to accept them. Accept them. They do exist. Uh, but try not to <laughs> give in to your limiting belief. Try not to be persuaded by limiting beliefs. Keep doing what you're doing and keep taking action and just do whatever you set out to do. Ignore those voices in your head. Try to reason with those voices in your head, I should say. A lot of English learners have limiting beliefs um, as they are not confident with their English. They start feeling embarrassed when speaking with native speakers. They become too self-conscious of their English. And there's nothing wrong with this. Nothing wrong with that. All you have to do is speak. Not be afraid to make mistakes. Make a mistake, but then laugh about it, okay? Just make fun of it. And eventually you will learn from your mistakes and then you will become a confident English speaker. Cool. There are more things you will learn next week, so don't miss next week's episode. I hope it helps you and I hope it inspires you. So that's my brief overview of the chat with Nati from Brazil. I think it's best you hear the rest from Nati next week. She can explain it better than me. Okay, cool. If there are any terms or phrases you don't understand, just send me a message and I will happily explain them. Thank you for tuning in today. It's been a pleasure as always. I have to rest my voice, my uh, vocal cords. Can't believe I lost my voice. You've been jamming with Milena from English Made Simple. Until next time, hasta la próxima.